Hello, welcome back to Diamond Painting 101. Are you guys ready? Because we are actually going to start diamond painting today. Um, I've got my workstation all set up here. I've got my light pad on my easel. I've got my clamp holding my canvas to my light pad so it won't wiggle around. I've got my drills over here in their containers. My drill pen, some washi tape, my tray, my floral clay, and then one thing I forgot to tell you about yesterday that you should have to get started is a straight edge. I have an old gift card here that I use. Um, you can use a ruler, uh, anything that's convenient that you have in the house. You don't have to go buy anything. You do want it to be um, something that's substantial and that you can peel off the sticky area on the canvas. If, if you have something that's cardboard or paper that will tear if it gets on that adhesive, you don't want to use that. So you do want to use something plastic or metal as your straight edge. So we're going to peel off the same section that I peeled off yesterday. And the first thing that I do when I start a section is the edges. You don't have to do that. You can start in the middle if you want. Um, I like to define the very edge of my canvas first so that I get a nice crisp area on that edge. And then when I fill in with the drills, it kind of locks everything into place. So I'm going to show you how I do my edges. And now this piece that I peeled off, I'm going to put it back down, but just a little ways away from the edge so that I'm not sticking my hand in it. Uh, it's just a little protection to help keep that canvas clean and help it keep it stick. So I'm going to take this card and line it right up against that line. And now it looks like I have three different colors that go on this edge. I have the one that's symbol is a seven, one whose symbol is an eight, and one whose symbol is a carrot mark. So the first one I'm going to grab is that carrot. Now this canvas has two different carrot symbols. I can show you. And you'll see this a lot with the symbols. Um, one is facing left and one is facing right. You want to make sure that you have the correct one, uh, especially some people work by rotating, rotating their canvas around, so you might work on it upside down. Always ensure that you are actually grabbing the correct drills when you have symbols like this that can go either way. Like this one is a arch symbol. I can't think of the proper name for it right now. And that can have a counterpoint that goes the other way as well. So always make sure that you're actually grabbing the one that matches the symbol. So now this is the one that I want, the 762. It's the lighter of the two. The other one is a 310. And I think it shows on my symbol or on my key over here. That one actually has a black background, so these two are pretty easy to tell apart, but sometimes they're not. So just always double check that you have the right one, because otherwise you're picking off loads of drills off your canvas with the tweezers, and it's just, it's not terribly fun. So I'm going to pour some of these in my tray, and apparently on my lap, because I am especially coordinated today. And I just shake to get a few of them set the correct direction. Now, my favorite drill pen is actually the plain pink pen. I've tried the ones with the grips. I've tried the flatter one or fatter ones, the, the ones that are made out of pens, like I showed you in the video. My favorite one, the most comfortable one that I use is just the plain pink pen. So sometimes what comes with the kit is actually what is going to work best for you. So I have a drill on my pen. I'm going to come over here, find that first carrot symbol, and I'm going to take this drill 
and butt it right up against my gift card. So I've got it lined up nice and straight, butted up tight against my gift card. You can take your pen and slide it around a little bit. If you need to, you can also take your tweezers and slide it around. But get it so that it's nice and tight up against your gift card. I'm going to pick up another one and do the same thing in the next space. And another one. And I'm going to do this whole color all the way around the edge of the canvas doing the same thing. I'll peel this up and move it as I go along and I'll be back when I'm done. Okay, so I've gotten all of the, the carrot symbol drills around my edge. Um, I wanted to show you when you move the card or your ruler or whatever you're using, you just kind of slowly peel it up off of that little overhang of adhesive and it should come up with no problem. Occasionally that adhesive will peel up with your card. Just lay it back down, give it a rub with your fingers and it should lay back down. Um, if it starts to peel into your canvas, you can take an X-Acto knife and run it right along the seam um, so that the sticky stays where you need it to stay and peels up off of just the edge and not the canvas area where you're working. So I've gotten all those carrots done. I'm going to pour them back into my container very carefully. So to avoid making a mess when you're doing this, I just kind of give it a light little tap to get them all down and back into the container. I'll put the lid back on that. Now I'm going to do the eight symbol. And the reason I'm picking this one is because most of what's along this edge is the sevens. So a lot of those sit next to each other, and I'm going to use that one to lock it in. So, which I'll explain when we get there. But, so, I basically start with the colors that there aren't as many of along the edge, and then work my way up to the color that's used the most. Sorry, I'm having some difficulty getting my containers out of the big container. So this is the one that is the eight symbol. It's kind of a minty greenish whitish gray, I guess. You'd think a nail tech would have a better handle on color descriptions, but I don't. <laughs> so, and I'm going to do the same thing here. And now with the drills that I've already placed, I just kind of butt this up against those drills and then stick it down to the canvas. And I also, when I place these, if they're next to a drill that I've already put down, I use that as a guide. So I'm going to kind of go in from the corner. So let's say this is my drill, this is my credit card. I'm trying to lay the corner here first of the drill and then I push it that way and that way I get a real nice line against both the guide, the credit card guide, and my already placed drill. I know it's hard to see because my hand's kind of in the way here. Let me see if I can maybe scooch this over a little bit. Bouncing, sorry. Don't get car sick. So you can see here, I'm putting in this corner first. I'm going to get right up against the credit card and the already placed drill and snugging it in there. Now the straighter 
your edge is, the more everything else is going to just lock into place and line up. Now you'll notice because I just filled my drill pen, I'm getting like this fringe of gunk around the edge that kind of squeezes out as I place drills. I just, as that kind of comes out, I just pull it off and throw it away. So now here's another one. I'm going to go up into that corner and put the drill down. Now when you're placing drills, you don't want to like jam them down. You do want to have a relatively light touch. Um, occasionally, like when you're checkerboarding, which we'll see in a little while, um, you do have to give it some pressure to get it to snap down into place, especially if it's a, a tight little space. Um, but when you're just starting to place them like this, it's not a tight fit. So you just want to put it down relatively gently. That way too, if you need to pull it up and reposition it, it's a lot easier to get up if you haven't completely jammed it into the adhesive. So I'm going to finish placing these eights and I'll be back again. Okay, so I've got all the eights placed and now all I have left are the sevens. Um, when I poured out these drills, I noticed that they're stuck together a little bit. Uh, one of the ways that you can fix that is just to take your finger and press down on them in the tray and a lot of times they'll break apart. If you have some really stubborn ones, uh, you can throw them into a tray by themselves and then take another tray and just kind of press it on top and it'll snap them apart. Um, another thing you can do if they're really stubborn is get a pill crusher and uh, throw them in the pill crusher and give it a little twist and they'll typically come apart. Um, some people will put them in a spoon and put another spoon on top of them. Um, that works if they are just kind of stuck together from the manufacturing process. If it's static, uh, you can combat that in a few different ways. You can throw them in the freezer for about five minutes. Um, that will help. You can take a dryer sheet and cut up some small pieces and keep them in the container with your drills. Uh, the other problem that sometimes people run into is an oil that's on your drill. And basically what that is is when they're making them, they put uh, an oil on the mold that they inject the plastic into. Um, that is a little more difficult to get off. It's supposed to, there's a washing process in the factory that it's supposed to go through that to remove it, but um, sometimes that does not happen or it doesn't do it completely. If you get any like this or like that, uh, you can put it in some water with a little bit of dish soap and uh, swish them around and then use a strainer to strain them out of the water and then just let them dry on a paper towel until they're dry and usable. Um, so those those are going to be the most common oh, problems you run into with your drills. Uh, the other thing you have to watch for is sometimes they have pits or holes in them uh, from the manufacturing process. Those I typically don't use. I don't throw them away right away because just in case I don't have enough. Um, but they're not the ones I really want on my canvas so I kind of pick around them. Um, and then sometimes the bottoms, it's what is called a hollow drill. The bottoms have a, like a, they go in instead of being flat. And those ones, they won't stick to your canvas. So they're really not usable. When you come across one, just throw it away. Um, so that should cover most of the issues you'll see with your drills. Just off the top of my head. So, okay, so I'm working on the sevens now. Um, and these I'm gonna place a little bit differently. Um, I'm gonna try and leave holes and then go back and fill them in. So again, I'm putting my, my gift card down up against my already placed drills to maintain that straight line. And if you notice when you're placing them that you've got a few that aren't quite lined up, 
you can give them a little push but you see once you put them down they just they kind of want to be where they're at so but when I put like this drill down next to this one it's gonna it's gonna push it out and also this is a craft it's not supposed to be perfect if it was perfect it would be made by a machine and not a person so don't obsess too much about having everything lined up perfectly it's not going to happen um and it's just going to drive you crazy and, and make it less enjoyable so um so as i put these down i'm just kind of leaving holes um i've i've talked a little bit about a checkerboard and that's kind of what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm leaving spaces um, in kind of a faux checkerboard. When you have big patches of color on the inside that you're filling down or filling in, um, if you place your drills in a checkerboard pattern, leaving holes between all of them, when you go back and fill in that pattern, the drills kind of lock together and they line themselves up. So even if you have one that's significantly crooked, placing one into a hole next to it will kind of make it go where it should and make it look lined up. So I do this even when I'm doing the side where I leave holes and then I come back and fill them in. Um, if you have a canvas that's printed well and your drills are consistent in size, a lot of times when you're doing a checkboard, you get a really or a checkerboard, you'll get a really satisfying snap as you put them in. You can kind of feel it crunch into place. Um, a lot of canvases are printed in such a way though that they're a little bit on the looser side so um, if you don't get that snap it doesn't mean you've done it wrong it just means that the canvas is printed with spaces that are just a little bit bigger than the drills so they don't fit quite so tightly together so now I'm going back and I'm filling in these holes and I am getting a, a little bit of a snap on some of them as it pushes the ones next to it out to lock them all into place. And I've got that row done. So I'm going to peel this off. And you can see it is lined up pretty straight. It's not perfect, but again, I'm not really aiming for perfect. I'm aiming for fun and handmade. So, so I'm going to put that one down there. I don't know if you can hear my dog. She's snoring. She's an English bulldog, so even when she's awake, sometimes she snores because her flat face just makes it kind of hard for her to breathe. But if you are hearing her snore, I'm sorry. <laughs> Here it's just kind of background noise. We've all gotten really used to it. So now, especially on this top row, this is all sevens left to fill in. So I really am going to kind of place them with as many gaps and go back and fill in the open holes. And I can't see the top of this very well because my, my camera's in the way. So hopefully I'm getting that lined up straight. If I was just doing this without an audience, I would be practically climbing on top of my table and spinning it towards me to make sure. There I have couples stuck together. 
I'm just gonna peel them apart, dump them back in my tray. And you see, you can see as I'm laying them down, I'm taking some of the other colors that I laid previously and just kind of pushing them up against my my card there, trying to get everything tight as I go. There we go. We have the border all done. So now I'm going to peel this off. I'm not going to switch colors because there are all sorts of colors in this background. So I'm going to show you. I go when I'm filling in background, I go color by color. Um, you don't have to do it that way. I've seen people who are, will checkerboard all their colors. I don't do that. I'll checkerboard a single color and then go back and fill in with that color and then go switch to my next color and do that again. Um, might be helpful if I turned on my light pad here. Um, so I'm going to fill in the color that I'm using in the background um, this is the seven uh, and just show you how I do that and then we have for her hair here there's a big chunk of black so I'll show you how I do the checkerboard with that um, but so as I'm working I take just like I did for working on the edge I take this piece of backing paper that I peeled off and I just set it over the bottom part and I'll work um, from the top down using this to keep my hand off the adhesive in the canvas to keep it nice and clean. Let me move this a little bit so you can see a little better. So I'm just going to start in the corner and I'm going to fill in the sevens doing the same thing that I did before. So I've done a partial checkerboard here. So all of these were sevens. I left that middle hole open. And then I'll come here and do the same thing. So even though this color is mixed in with another one, I can still do that checkerboarding action and then come back and place those drills in the middle. Now there's not much snap doing it like this this way but as I fill in with more colors the snap will get a little bit more intense as I go. And I don't worry too much about getting them aligned perfectly. The thing I've noticed about squares when I'm working them is that they kind of work themselves out. Um, even though it might look crooked and you might be able to see gaps once it fills in everything starts smashing together and it just kind of if you've gotten this edge done real well everything just kind of locks into place um, you might still have gaps but once there's no light behind it and it's hanging on a wall you're not going to see them um, these light colors like we have in this background are a little less forgiving because they do show the black lines between them but again, once it's framed and hanging on a wall, 
it's not going to be as noticeable. Um, so I would just keep working one color at a time until I got it all filled in. So let's though, let's move on to the black so I can show you a true checkerboard. So I kind of rushed through these videos. I put out five of them in the matter of a couple days. Uh, this is not going to be a, a normal thing for me. The reason I did it so fast is a few reasons, actually. Uh, one is I'm on vacation this week, so I have the time. Two, they're starting work on my road, which you can hear a little bit, I'm sure, in the background. Uh, and so I wanted to get this portion of it done before they finish that. And I wanted to get it done in a relatively timely basis before they finish the road because I, um, I am sending one of these kits to a friend uh, who I'm, is far enough away that I'm not going to be able to help her through. Um, and so I wanted to make sure this research was, or this, uh, this resource was live and online for her, um, so that when she gets the kit, she can figure out how to get started right out of the gate. So, So you can see now I just kind of started in a random spot for this. And I kind of do that when I'm doing these inside bits. I sometimes will make pictures, make little mountains as I'm placing drills uh, just to keep myself entertained from getting bored. Um, I do like to work on the diagonal when I'm doing these checkerboards um, instead of going across a row. I don't lose my place quite as much, uh, especially if you're working with several colors. So there you've got the idea of the checkerboard. Um, you're just going every other one. And I'm not worrying too much. I mean, I'm, I'm not just throwing them on the canvas, but I'm also not worrying too much about getting them perfectly lined up in the guide square either. So once you have the checkerboard, like you would, I would fill out the whole thing, but in the interest of time, um, I like to go back and do the edges first on these open areas, um, just to get something to hold it in. And then you would just fill it in. closer yep. 
Now, because of how I'm working, some of these ones that were getting farther away from me are a little loose. So you can take and just kind of snug them up to one another. Um, but again, as I work the checkerboard, they would just kind of sort themselves out anyway. Um, so it's really, it's not that big of a deal. Um, if they're a little crooked, it's fine. I, there are some lovely ladies out there who get these things lined up straight as soldiers. I am not one of them. I doesn't bother me if it does look a little handmade. It, to me, it should. And see, especially on that black, you can see once I'm blocking the light from the light pad underneath it, you can barely see the gaps. So um, once it's framed and on a wall, it's going to look amazing. And now the last thing that I wanted to show you is the washi tape. Um, if I, I tend to work like I'm reading a book. So I start, oh, me. Oh, there we go. Let me pull this back out again, maybe. There we go. Um, I tend to work like I'm reading a book. So I start in the top left corner, I work to the right, then I work down. Um, I tried a lot of different ways when I first started and kept getting my hand in the adhesive and it would get filled with lint and dog hair. Um, so I, I tend to work like I'm reading a book to keep my arm out of my working area as much as possible. I, when I have larger canvases, I just kind of will, will take and kind of roll the canvas underneath my working area, not on itself, but kind of like into my lap under my desk. Um, but not everybody does that. A lot of people work from the bottom and go this way. Uh, one of the best ways to keep, because like I told you, around this edge here, there is that sticky bit. It's what we were laying our our straight edge into as we were doing the edges. So one of the best ways to keep that clean um, and keep it from ripping your arm hair out, uh, although it is a, a way to get a salon wax without the expense, um, is to take washi tape and just lay it down on the edges. Uh, like I said before, the wa washi tape is real low tack, so it will peel off when I'm done, no problem. Um, so I just take it and and I wait until I've done those edge drills just because then I can put my straight edge in that adhesive uh, and use it to line my drills up. Um, and then I cover it up as soon as I'm done with that just to avoid getting any grossness in it. And washi tape, you can get anywhere. Amazon, it's available at Walmart, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, Joann Fabrics, uh, Target, <laughs> Shopco, um, and it's in all different patterns. This is a cute watermelon one. Um, so sometimes if I, I feel like it, I'll match it to the canvas I'm working on. Other times I just grab one. I have a huge bin. My husband says I have a problem, um, but I love washi tape because it's pretty and you can do all sorts of things with it. Um, so you can use washi tape. You can also use painter's tape, um, possibly scotch tape masking tape, um, but something to keep that out. Other people, when they save these, and I told you yesterday I have a drawer full of them, you can use these too and just stick it along the edges. I don't like these because they're big and flappy, um, and I tend to peel them up as I'm working because I move my arms around a lot as you've been watching me talk with my hands for the last five videos. Um, so that wasn't my favorite thing, but I like the tape because it actually stays in place. Um, another thing that you can do if uh, yours comes with a clear um, protecting or protective film instead of these paper ones, those don't work so great for reusing and sticking them down. If you put them on the wrong side, they don't peel up quite as well as these ones do. Um, and at one point, I actually had one that got stuck pretty good. Uh, I managed to get it back off, but it was a close call. So the plastic covers, I don't recommend reusing like these. Um, I'll peel them 
back and put them down to make sure that I'm not putting the wrong side down. Um, but you can actually get uh, parchment paper um, and use that in, instead. So you can peel off the this or the, the clear backing and uh, or clear film and use parchment paper instead to protect it and this peels right off now this does have a shelf life like these ones I can use over and over the parchment paper you can't eventually it will start sticking a little too uh, heavily to your canvas and and once I had one actually get stuck and tear um, so there is a life span to using the parchment paper but it is a really good replacement and because it's thinner than the paper backing it's when you have drills done it, it protects a little better because it'll just kind of like you can get it placed over those drills and stuck on the sticky parts so parchment paper is another one that I use a lot of um, I buy it in the big sheets that go on like a cookie sheet and cut it down into smaller pieces and just kind of as they start getting uh, not quite as slippery I just throw them away. Um, so parchment paper is a good one to have on hand. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else right off the bat that you should know. Um, but I, I think I think we've covered it for the most part. So um, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Um, there have been some good comments on the YouTube channel. Uh, one uh, was left the other day uh, about getting those bubbles and creases out of a, a canvas that was on the unboxing video. Um, so, you know, join the discussion, uh, see what other people are saying because they might give you some really good tips and tricks. Um, but if you do have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll answer them as best I can. Um, I'm going to diamond paint. I'll let you know when I finish this. You can see the finished results. Um, and until next time, happy diamond painting.